hotspots. Could you tell if someone was lying to you? There were three hotspots with body language that scream pants on fire. Today on Katie. And welcome back. You know, today we've met some people who were deceived by loved ones in devastating ways. It might have all of us wondering, how well do I really know my husband, my neighbor, or my friends? Janine Driver is a world-renowned body language expert and New York Times bestselling author. Her latest book, You Can't Lie to Me, teaches people what to look for in order to spot a liar. Hi, Janine. Hi, welcome. Katie. Nice to see Hi, you. Nice to see so, you. honestly... How did you get interested, first of all, in this line of work? It's fascinating, but it's unusual. It is unusual, and, and I wish I had a great story for you, but unfortunately, in 1976, I was climbing in a neighbor's tree, two houses down. He asked me to come out of the shed, come out of the tree to go into the shed to play a fun game. And when I went into that shed, I was six years old. No one talked about this in, in naughty, you know, in our private areas. or We didn't have Amber Alerts in 1976. I went into the shed where my life was forever changed. And I was only in there with this adult for a couple minutes. And I literally created my life's mission without knowing at the age of six to stop bad people from doing bad things. And I went into law enforcement. So I brought with me today techniques straight out of the FBI and the CIA handbook on how to detect deception. So I say, if you can learn what I know, the verbal and the nonverbal deception, dissecting deception techniques, you can protect your family, your friends, and your finances. You talk about things called hot spots. And yes. what are those? Are those things that kind of make you aware that someone might be lying? So a hot spot is, think about hot, something's hot, you don't want to touch it. It says, wait a minute, danger. So a hot spot is suspicious behavior, whether it's verbal, where there's language patterns or behavioral patterns. And once you can spot these patterns, we all see the same thing. You're seeing what I'm seeing, but you don't know what it means when you see it. When you're hearing the same words or reading the same statements and looking at the same emails, but you don't know that this one word indicates they are holding something back from you. So wouldn't it be great if you could know what I know? Yes. yes. All right. So, 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 that's so tell us. So you set up a little social experiment for us. What is it? I did. So I took a real Renee, and I have an actress Renee. And so I want you and the audience and the people at home to guess, can you spot the phony? Can you spot the phony Renee? So we're going to see them say the same exact words, but can you spot their behavior shifts that one is lying and one's telling the truth? Ooh, Who's this, the phony? This is going to be fun. All right. Are you let's, ready? Let's Are you ready? look at the yes. first Renee. Okay. My name is Renee Woodhead and I am a professional photographer. I lived in Japan for about seven years where I modeled and now I live in West Palm Beach and I travel between there and New Jersey. That's Renee number one. Now you might have questions, you have to wait. All right, it all let's, in. let's look at Renee number two. Hi, my name is Renee Woodhead and I'm a professional photographer. I lived in Japan for seven years where I model. Now I live in West Palm Beach where I travel between there and New Jersey. Who's the phony? I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, Katie, okay. one or two. Who do you think the phony is? One. I'm going to go with my smart audience. <laughs> I'm going to say one, but honestly, I couldn't really tell the difference that much. It's interesting. M many of you are saying one, which is really interesting. Why? You might see her moving a little bit. I she see some people shaking be. their head. They say it's two. You think it's two? Listen, you have to get what's called a baseline. What is someone's baseline behavior? How do they normally behave? However, in story number two, we see some suspicious behavior too. So let's find out. Will the phony Renee please stand up? The fake, the phony, the one that's trying to pull wool over us. <laughs> And you're not a good liar. <laughs> if we all knew what to look for, there were three hot spots with body language that scream pants on fire. Literally, the smoke was coming up from your pants yesterday. <laughs> Yes. Well, what, what were they? What were the things that should have clued us? Because the only thing that I thought was strange uh, was at the end, you kind of did a little weird smirk. Ooh. But that's the only thing I picked up And you're on. such a smart cookie, Katie, because you've done interviews with many people who have been holding something back from you, keeping something from you. And I think unconsciously you pick up on that smirk, and that smirk is called contempt. I'll talk about it in a second. And we often see that with liars. And when you see it in your regular interviews, I notice you get really likable, really soft, you're not overly aggressive, and you give people a way to tell you the truth. You never attack, so you're really smart to pick up on that. The oh, first cue, you, you're... <laughs> okay. All right. The first cue, All right. you can, can come work go, for can, me. Do you want to go back to the real Renee? Yeah. The first Renee? So oh, this one, oh, the this, fake. This is, oh, fake Renee. Okay. Let's look at her shoulder. This is called a shoulder shrug. A shoulder shrug is uncertainty. What do you want for lunch? Soup, a salad? I don't know. 
That belongs there. The verbal says, I don't know. The nonverbal says, I don't know. That wasn't Here, a very strong shoulder it's shrug. It's so subtle. Hello. Many interviews, again, where people are holding something back from you. We see these shrugs. It means uncertainty. All right. Let's see All right, the other here's the next spot. Okay. The next one, we see the fake Renee move her body. So we move our body to move our mind. In law enforcement, a lot of confessions happen. Katie, walking from the jail cell to the interrogation room, or the interrogation room back to the jail cell. Why? When we move our bodies, we move our minds. We decrease our stress and anxiety. I walk next to my friends. I'm decreased in stress. You're decreased. Confessions start to happen with movement. When liars have that increase in stress and anxiety, one of the elements we do is we move. That's a good question, Katie. <clears throat> I'm glad you brought it up. And so we'll move our bodies to move our mind to decrease our stress to get oh, through the interview. So you get fidgety. We get fidgety is what you're saying. Yes. And finally, and finally that, that, that smirk. That smirk that which I was is so called astute to notice. It's called <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's called contempt. It's on one side of the mouth. It's always the only expression on our face out of seven emotions we all have: happiness, sadness, fear, surprise, anger, contempt, and disgust. It's the only emotion that always shows up on one side of the face. We see a lot of liars at the end of their statement will leak the contempt. And again, many people you've interviewed will leak that contempt. It says, I'm getting one over on you. Well, that was very interesting. And, and when we come back, the number one thing you can use today to find out if someone you love is lying to you. That's right after this. With investigator and body language expert Janine Driver, who's so great, and by the way, is eight months pregnant. So <laughs> congratulations you. to you on that, which is exciting. Thank you. All right. So I think a lot of us are going to be so freaked out when we leave today. We're going to be watching everything and listening to everyone. Your kids and, and husbands and wives are totally in trouble. We're going to be much more, I think, skeptical, which I guess is healthy. But mm -hmm. what are the verbal clues that you need to pay attention to? to recognize that someone is BSing you, Janine. <laughs> yeah, so I think there, there's many, but the most important is listening to the words people say to you, Katie. So if I said to you, um, I know you think I'm lying to you, versus I say to you, I want to let you know I'm not lying to you. Which do you think is more honest? Which one would you trust more? The first one is wrong. No, I, I would say the second. I have to so, disagree with my smart audience yeah. on that. I would say. And if you got it wrong, you know, it's okay. You're, I'm here to teach you. Why? In statement analysis, which was created by a guy named Mark McGlish, who worked in law enforcement for decades looking at statements, we know, thanks to his research, we say what we mean. I know you think I'm lying to you. They've literally said, I'm lying to you. And the second person said, I want to let you know I'm not lying to you. You can't take out the word not from the sentence, but we can certainly take out words from the beginning or the end. I would never hurt your kid versus I know you think I'm going to hurt your kid. What did they just say? I'm going to hurt your kid. So listen to the words people are saying. Believe them. Now, the body language cue that's really big is my favorite is what's called naval intelligence. We <laughs> face our belly button towards people we like, admire, and trust. So in law enforcement, <laughs> in law enforcement, if Katie's asking me a question and I suddenly turn, I might be your child's babysitter. I might be your financial advisor. I might be the person that is protecting your elderly mom. And as you're asking me questions about about why bruises are there, or money is missing, I'll keep looking at you, but my body turns and faces away. It's called the belly button rule or naval intelligence. I'm now giving you the cold shoulder. Oh. In law enforcement, we often face our belly buttons to our door or an exit because subconsciously we want out of there. So when you're answering questions, I'm looking for this consistency. A sudden I do this, we've got a hot spot. That's so interesting. And I think one th we should point out that body language is critically important, not only in, in determining if someone is not being truthful, but in, in the way you present yourself and exuding self-confidence. I just interviewed a woman who's a professor at Harvard Business School, and she said when you go in for a job interview, Amy you have Cuddy. to... Yes, Amy, Amy Cuddy. Cuddy. Yes, yes. You have to have your shoulders yes. back. You have to be yes. really front and yes. center. But you can't kind of close yourself off to a potential employer well, because it just right away signals that you do not have the confidence to really take on the job. Well, I so. spoke at an event where I shared Amy Cuddy's research. And at the end of the event, a guy was standing up like this in the back of the room. And I go, uh, what's going on here? And he goes, oh, I'm the next speaker and I'm terrified. So <laughs> no, I'm hoping true. this will decrease stress and anxiety before I 
speak after you. No, but it's true because Amy says if you take what she calls the Wonder Woman stance mm -hmm. before you have kind of a, a potentially stressful encounter with someone, mm -hmm. like a job interview or maybe a hard conversation with someone, right. if you actually stand like this, mm -hmm. like Wonder Woman, I'm not going to do the whole thing, <laughs> that it, it actually really helps you in terms of your emotional state when you're about to have that Right, and you could do this meeting. in a bathroom stall, you know, you could be just standing there in the bathroom stall, decreasing your stress and anxiety before you confront someone, before you go in for that raise, or just simply anytime you're stressed, you can do that. So definitely our body language is great with detecting deception, but also on how you show up with others. We judge you in the blink of an eye. And why not give yourself an edge? Don't you want an edge in the game of life? And of course, don't forget a firm handshake and yes. eye contact. So important. Nice to meet you, Katie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with your baby. Thank you. Good luck Thank with you. your baby.